And it's a welcome to the gelding on a day where we see nine race card at Flemington Gelding. And I understand that you might even be going out to have a look. Um, Professor, yes. Um, do I say good afternoon to her? Oh, good morning to everyone. That's right. Good morning, um, gelding. Yes, to yourself and um, to all our listeners, Professor. Yep. Yeah. Heading out to headquarters tomorrow for a bit of a social day. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rumour could have it, Professor, could be starting $400 behind on the punt <laughs> um, after paying for um, the the lunch that we'll be attending. Well, I hope I hope it's a nice lunch, Gilding. Well, they, yes, they, they do look after you out there um, in the new member stand in the dining room there. So get a fantastic view and um, very um, sunny, of course. A nice day tomorrow, 29 degrees, Professor. So, yeah, looking forward to it. All right. And the first is at 12.35, Gilding. The feature race, race seven, the Australian Guineas, a group one for three-year-olds over 1,600 metres worth a million dollars. The track's currently a good for the rails out two metres for the entire circuit. Uh, what are your two best bets for tomorrow's racing, Gilding? Uh, yes, Professor. Robbie will be going <coughs> late in the day. Look, with the 29 expected, I hope they don't put a whole heap of water on, thinking that it's going to evaporate, because you know what I think about the way they dangle with tracks at the moment. But um, look, um, I'll be betting in race seven and race eight, Professor, and going on one of my little things of as a tipster and as of someone that backs horses, I like to back horses that have a lot of current form. And having a look at race seven and race eight, <coughs> I just go back to the all stakes, Professor. Now, the official winner was Jack and O. First past the post, of course, was Gentleman Roy. Jack and I've got the race on protest in the stewards' room. Right or wrong, I'm not too sure. But so, my tips for tomorrow in the group one Australian guineas is race seven, number one, Jack and O. Mick Price, Damien Lane returns from Saudi Arabia, riding there last week. Um, this horse won a wait for age, open age, 1,400 metres last start, in the, even though it finished second. Professor drops back to racing against horses at its own age, three-year-olds. It beat on, on Thunderstruck. It beat missed the bright side last week um can i see any other horses in this field doing that probably not professor so look i think it's one of the bets of the day tomorrow um jack and o currently it ran the 230 mark professor because it's the group one you might keep getting that it's had two starts back this campaign for um two wins it's a horse that's had 10 starts for five wins, Professor. 50% leading stable, good jockey. Um, last start, wait for age group one winner. I think it all count for the three-year-olds. Um, so my first bet is race seven, number one, Jack and Oak. And then go to race eight, um, horse four, Gentleman Roy, that um, drops back to the group two, Blamey Stakes, over 1,600. Um, professor um, last start first pass the post in a group one beats the top eight in Tuvalu last time smoking Romans may be a danger pounding may be a danger Sosie Bond's in it um, the horses that beat last start again I'm thunderstruck missed the bright side if they were in this field they'd be favoured so I'm I think Gentleman Roy, with its good record at Flemington, Professor, will get out in front. Um, and I think just wins again, Professor. 17 starts for eight wins, four seconds and a third. Ticks all our boxes. Ridden by Mark Zara, who wrote it perfectly last time. Um, look, I just think these horses... Again, 270, Professor. 
I think they're great value for our parlays. And you like Professor? Yeah, Gelding, my first selection of the day is in race three, the Calm Trophy, open race over a 1,000 metres, and I like horse three on the lead coming out of barrier one. It's had 31 starts for five wins and 11 placings. Now, generally, Gelding, that might steer us against picking it to win, but it was second last start at Sandown Hillside in a listed race to Star Patrol. And if it you was follow a good the run, that's right. And if you follow the form through Gelding, Star Patrol started in the Oakley Plate, a Group One race, and ran sixth. Yep. So, and we were on Star Patrol that day, Professor. It's one of our horses. Yes, correct. So we know the form well. And I thought you might like Blake Shin in the saddle. Riding in great form, Blake Shin. So, um, Broder flew up to um, Chartin last Sunday, Professor, and rode a winner up in Chartin and, and is now back. So I'm very happy with that selection of on the lead. 14% career win rate for Blake Shin Gelding. 20% he's showing in the last 50. So, you know me, winning form's good form. Trained by Richard Friedman. And he's in career form too because uh, over his career, 15% win rate. Over the last 50, 16%. So very happy well, about those selections. And you can get four twenty and a and $1.70 at the moment, Gelding. Um, I like it, Professor. I like it. A very, very good good choice. It might be a bit of an open race. So, yeah, um, good jockey. As we know, Richard Friedman, part of the old FBI, the Friedman Brothers Inc. that <laughs> dominated... Um, during the 90s, so um, and I'm invincible, uh, Gelding. Um, again, um, 31 starts, five wins, seven seconds, Professor. So, yeah, one over half for a million dollars. Blake Shin in the saddle, I like it. All right, Gelding, and my second selection's in race nine, the last race on the card, the Resimax group plate. A Benchmark 90 over 1,200 metres. In that race, Gelding, I like horse 10, Life Lessons, coming out of barrier eight. It's had six starts for three wins and two placings. Gelding, you've got a bit of a giggle up there. What's... <laughs> why, why would you like Life Lessons in, a, in this race, Professor? Well, a couple of reasons, Gelding. Number one, first up, it's two starts for a win and a second. So I like the first up form. Um, the last start before its break, it ran second to Nugget. Now Nugget ran third in the in the in the CF4 stakes. So uh, a Group One race. That's not bad form. Yes, Professor. I've, we've tipped two two horses out of um, that all stakes already for tomorrow's meeting. Exactly right, Gelding. So and Jamie Carr's in the saddle now. Talk about career form, Gelding. Over her career, she's won at the clip of 17%, over the last 50 races, Gelding, 30%. So nearly a third of the nearly the third of the rides that she's getting on, she's winning on. Now that's that's an incredible percentage. Um may need the money, Professor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and yeah. Peter Moody training, he's second on the uh, training list at the moment. Um to the jockey with Almost the best strike rate, apart from James McDonald in Melbourne. Um, Peter Moody, the trainer with the best strike rate in Melbourne at the moment. Um, yeah, see why you like it. Don't like Pinstripe or It's Our Time or The Jumbuck, Professor. A couple of dangers to it, but I do like your choice. Staying, Gilding, staying, Gilding very, staying very, very sound with those Packing them trainers that you're in the click with there, Professor. <laughs> you and your hot chocolates with the trainers. I don't know. <laughs> Gelding, um, I agree with you. There are a number of uh, dangers to life lessons in that race. And each of those horses you named, I did look at and did consider. And they could well win. But at four sixty and and $1.80, Gelding, I just thought if we're looking for some value... As an each way better, the dollar eighty will come in handy if uh, the four dollar sixty doesn't come in. Yes, uh, I like it, Professor. I like it. Now, yes, have Gilding. you finished with your tips? Or... Yes, Gilding, I have. 
I was just going to compliment you there, Professor, of the setup you now have in your room with um, some, I see three different horses there, um, which are all winning horses. Now, Danish Rock, Del Rios and Atlantic Rose. Now, how many horses have you been involved in, Professor? I think five, Gelding. Five, okay. I think five. Right. Might, but might be four, but I think four or five. I can't remember. Four or five. Yes. And there's three different horses there with winning photos. Yeah, it might only be four, actually. Yeah. Because and we had we had one that didn't get uh, to race, Gelding. That's right. So we can't really count that one, can we? No. Well, I'll, yeah, I wish Mick Price had to cancel those bills then, Professor. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he kept the bills up, but I've got to admit that looks very, very impressive there behind the professor. Well, there's one that there's one that can't fit in the frame, so there's five five uh, five yeah. photos of winning winning horses gilding. So I'm very proud of that. Yes, that's um, not a bad little record, Professor. Not many people would have that record as an owner. No, no, and uh, hopefully sometime soon, gilding, you and I might uh, team up again. <laughs> yes, yes, Professor. You might have to adopt me for that. <laughs> All right, Gelding, let's look at the Professor's parlay now. Well, the very one, one parlay. parlay. One hey. par the, the parlay from last week is still is still, still running. Alive. Still yep. alive. Yep. So last week we had Animo and we yep. parlayed the, and Animo saluted again and an excellent tip, Gelding. It was never wow. in doubt as far as I was concerned. Beautiful thing. And it's and just to explain again to the listeners, the whole idea of the Professor Parlay with the Horses League, we're trying to look for a certainty. We're not so worried about the odds on that because it's the hardest league. So we're looking for what we think is probably the best bet in Australia. Yes. And Animo certainly was the la best bet in Australia. And you, you tipped that last week, Gilding. You said that that would win, and it did. And we've got that teamed up with Penrith to beat Brisbane and the Roosters to beat the Dolphins. Yes, um, this weekend. So we're still waiting for that one. Well, could we have four Professor Parlays alive? Well, we could, Gelding. And so to tomorrow's Parlay, we're going to Sydney. Yes. Race eight, horse three, aft cabin. Yes. Now, we're giving it another chance. Yes. Would you like to explain why we decided to give it a forgive race for the last one, Gelding? Um, yeah, look, the last race, um, Timmy Clark got on board um, and it was a race winning. Timmy was um, the favourite to win um, to win um, the Jockeys Championship, but he had, he had one of those days, Professor, where he would have gone home and kicked the cat. Like he wrote about four favourites and they all got beaten. He managed to get them all beaten. Uh, Arth Cavan was second up. Um, ran fifth, was leading halfway down the straight. But that's after Timmy Clark. The horse missed, uh, missed the kick. He had to do a lot of work early to get it up outside the lead, Professor. So it was a bit of a sitting shot for them um, coming home last start. And was beaten, you know, to to it just over two lengths, Professor. <coughs> but the four starts before that, this horse has won three, was second to Jack and O, beaten the nose. Cadolphin James Cummings talked about this horse being right up there amongst their best. And when you talk about the Blue Army and the best horses, you're talking Animo in secret. Um, you know, Golden Mile, um, you know, horses that have won multiple group ones. He puts it up there. Let's give it a forget run. It's had six starts for three wins and two seconds. So before last start, Professor, it had been first or second in every start it had. So, look, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. If it had a race well last week, Professor, we would have been talking about a dollar fifty. Now we're talking about two dollars seventy, and you know I just think it can bounce back tomorrow. 
uh, or will and, and Randwick races and um, hopefully win. All right, Gelding, and we'll parlay that into going to the Premier League, Gelding. Professor. Yes, Gelding. What did you tell me last week? I said we'd steer away from the Premier League. Right, and wh where are we going this week? Uh, we're going to the Premier League, but I've got a feeling about this 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 oh. derby. No, so we're not steering away, we're steering straight in it. We're st going to steer into the eye of the storm, Gelding. <laughs> oh, well, oh, I, you're I, know, I know I worry, you, I worry you at times, Gelding. I know that. Oh, you do. <laughs> you do. What? Why do you tell me things and then do the reverse? <laughs> well, this one was just at a dollar twenty. It re represents some pretty good value for the parlay, Gelding. Oh, I'm um, sure you've got good reasons, Professor. Yeah, Ars Arsenal at home to beat Bournemouth. Arsenal on top of the Premier League at the moment. They've won 76% of their matches, Gelding, 19 of 25, a plus 33 goal differential. And they're playing the second bottom team, Gelding, Bournemouth. Oh. Uh, they've only won five games at, or 20%. They've got the worst defence in the league at minus 26 goal difference. And not only that, Arsenal are coming off a 4-0 win against Everton midweek. So uh, they'll have their tails up and they'll be at home, Gelding. So I think it might be very hard to... Very hard to toss them. And a dollar twenty good story value. Before, Professor in the Premier League. Uh Top well I did I, nah Gilding, I did tip Arsenal and they were playing away. And it was a as I said, it was a trap game. Everton Everton replaced Where their were manager. Everton? <laughs> Where were Everton? Second bottom, Gilding. Oh right, okay. Yeah. And did we win? No, it was a draw. Oh, okay. No, actually Everton won. Yeah. They won one nil. Oh boy! All right, we'll parlay okay. that. In, we'll parlay that into Penrith. We'll go with again with Penrith to beat the Brisbane Broncos. Now Penrith, uh, the giraffe had them third in his twenty twenty three NRL season preview, and he had the Brisbane that? Broncos tenth. So third versus tenth, Penrith should win. Yeah, but this is a giraffe picking his own side to win the flag. Well, yeah, but you know, like Gelding. We, he, he, he said he hadn't done that for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> and and didn't didn't he think the Eels will beat Melbourne? Yeah, I don't think he called them certainties, though. No, okay. no he didn't. He didn't. He didn't tell you to put your super on it. So that was one thing. Okay, that's not the Ross McDonald theory, is it? What's that, Gelding? Put a house on it and get two in return. <laughs> All right. Well, the win, the win parlay, Gelling, showing the luscious odds of four to one in the professor's parlay. Oh, beautiful professor! And the place parlay is showing two to one, so you can't sneeze at that either. I'm very happy you're going the NRL, professor. And as I said the other week, you'll probably, hopefully, be in the form you were with the NFL during the thing, where you were just about spot on every week. So. Looking forward to a good series, but I'll be sweating this one with the Premier League, seeing we were steering away from it. Well, we'll know Sunday morning, Gelding. We will. We will, Professor. All right, Gelding. Well, until next Saturday, and, and that's racing. It's good luck. And good punting.